Okay, it is time for talking pints. And it's not that Essex wasn't on the map. But the only way is Essex on the telly very much has put Essex on the map over the last decade and more. And one of the big stars of the only way of Essex is Essex's own Bobby Norris, who joins me for talking about it. Yes, Bobby. Lovely to meet you, my friend. How are you doing? Now, before, how am I doing? Mm. What in Clacton? Yeah. This is one of the friendliest towns I've ever been to in the whole country. Yeah. I, I really mean that. I really yeah, mean that. Nice. People are friendly. Yeah. Even the ones that disagree with me are quite friendly. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and well done to the councillor earlier. You know, he's a strong Remainer, Absolutely. but he came in. And, I think, and thank you to all of you for treating him reasonably and fairly. You know, the other side, the hard left, scream abuse at us. Yeah. We are better than that. We believe in democracy. And actually, point worth making to the two of you, isn't that what people fought for? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that what yeah. Pe yeah. people sacrificed for? Yeah. So that we could have these debates. Now, Bobby, before you were a TV star, what the hell were you? Well, first job, well, I say first job, I lasted a day. So. Oh, that was pretty good. As yeah. long, so, as long as Liz Truss. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much on par. So, I tried to be a waiter, but I, I just never got the hang of it. Like, people was walking out with like four plates on each arm, and I was just walking out with one in each hand. And I was like, Bob, this ain't going to work out. And still, with two plates, I dropped one down a customer <laughs> on my first day. So, I never got called for a second shift. Um, and then I went to work into a supermarket. I loved it. I was on the, on the old teals, chatting away to people, so like right up my street, and kind of got like a little bit of a promotion to the lottery and the, the cigarette kiosk. <laughs> that was like winning like a, an Oscar, do you know what I mean? I loved it, doing the scratch cards and the lucky dip on a Saturday. And meeting lots of people all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, loved people. So um, for me, and then after that, went into hairdressing and become a teacher. So how does... Reality TV. How does this impinge upon your life? How, Bobby, do you finish up on <laughs> Well, back when I joined the show, it was in its very early days. I mean, there was no ongoing reality show. Terry was its first. We had had Big Brother, but people went into an house for nine weeks, come out, and that was it. Job done. Next year, be different people. So there had never been an ongoing reality show. And I'd literally gone for a drink in a local bar, and uh, there was a producer come up to me and was just literally like, would you be interested in filming this show? And I was like, well, I was like, come into Marble Arch and meet us Tuesday. It was a place called Towery Towers. And um, yeah, went in, that added this meeting, and within a week was just filming this TV show. And I don't just think any to show, us... Bobby, you, if you stay at home, nothing good ever happens. You've got to get out and meet people and make your own luck. Oh, sure. No-one's got to knock at your front door and offer you no, opportunities, no. Do you know what I mean? You've got to be out there. So, and, and, it, and it's been a big success. Absolutely, yeah, huge. It was, like I say, the first of its kind, and from the back of that, we've seen others kind of replicate. We've obviously got, like, Made in Chelsea and yeah, Jordan yeah, Shaw. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And reality TV is such a staple of TV now. It's become a genre of its own, you know. So. Has, it led, has it led for you into other things? Yeah, so for me, I, I left the show last summer, yep. and I host a, a radio show now. Um, and I love doing my presenting and hosting. I, I did 10 years on the show, which is a long time on a reality yeah. show. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm com completely grateful for the opportunity. It, it, it changed my life and opened doors that w w was never going to be opened for me. So, yeah, re really grateful. Oh, it's been brilliant. And because the Sugar Hut, the nightclub, uh, is the epicentre of Towie, isn't it? Yeah, it was like our Queen Vic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It really that was. was a good thought, actually. It was. And um, we used to go there, like, pre, pre the show, do you know what I mean? And we'd obviously start filming there, but it was a massive part of our lives as Sugar Up. And um, it was a lovely place, and no, it was I an mean, era of Towie back then. Yeah, and just... terribly sad about Mickey Norcross and all of that. We so won't, sad. We won't dwell into that right now, but it was a horrible thing. Bobby, you've used, or you're using, you know, the fame and notoriety that you've got from that, and you've sort of become a bit of a political or social campaigner. Oh. You're famous, you're different in one way because you're gay, you've received a lot of online abuse. Yeah. 
Welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I just ignore the so-and-sos. But, <laughs> but, no, you've received a lot of nasty abuse online. Yeah. Uh, you're not alone. No. Anyone that becomes prominent or well-known gets this horrible abuse. Now, there is one school of thought that says, you know, the old-fashioned approach, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. There is a, perhaps a more updated view which is this sort of stuff, and particularly when it's happening to teenagers and others, is leading to mental health decline, suicide, and all the rest of it. Yeah. Tell us what you're trying to do to rectify yeah. what you see as an injustice. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Like, I'm big enough and old enough. I can deal with it. I think when you're in the public eye and you work it in the industry, you can't, no one deserves... The, the level of abuse. And, I mean, this isn't just someone going, I don't like your hair. I won't go into how bad some of the stuff I've been sent is, but we're talking, like, horrific, like, just next-level, disgusting and vile. I'll do your swap after this. Yeah, <laughs> we should sit and have a little look. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? For me, I use my voice and my profile. As I say, I can deal with it. I'm, I'm in my mid-30s. I've been in this industry for 11 years. I have a thick skin. I know 12, 13-year-old Bobby would have struggled and it weren't until speaking about it publicly and I get messages from parents that kids have... Their, their mental health is on the floor. Some of them won't leave their rooms. Sadly, so many are taking their own life. They're self-harming. So for me, if I could save one child from taking their own life, why would I not spend five right. years going to Parliament right. and trying to change right. that? And you've been doing that. You've been going to Parliament, you've been lobbying MPs, you've really, really been trying your socks off mm -hmm. on this, and I admire you for doing it. But, Bobby, there's a problem here. How the hell do we control the internet without censoring the internet? Yeah. How the hell do we do that? Because, I mean, I've seen... I've seen Twitter. Not now that Elon Musk has got it, but I've seen Twitter, you know, shadow-banning my content. Just because it doesn't suit their political... Way. How do we... And maybe you haven't got the answer, maybe no-one has. How do we strike this balance between free speech, free expression, all the things yeah. that we passionately believe in, yeah. and stopping stuff that is harmful? Who decides? I get what you're saying, and I certainly am not sat here and I've never in my five years of campaigning said, let's take away free speech, because everyone has opinions. I mean, we have opinions, let's have it right. But... For me, anything that's one illegal... Chap, one chap who was sitting here earlier. He had, he had a couple, yeah, he didn't he? He, he had a couple. <laughs> Bless him. Um, for me, anything that's... He's, he, he's gone for an early bath, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> anything that's illegal offline should be illegal online. So, again, this isn't right. like someone saying, I don't like this about you, I don't like your shows. Who cares about that kind of thing? It's irrelevant. When it's things that would be illegal on the central line, on Oxford Street, what, and I kind of get in defence of the law, things take time. Social media, relatively, like when I joined the show 11 years ago, I don't think Instagram existed, we had Twitter, but that was still in its, yeah. its infancy. Social media is a huge thing. The gene is out of the bottle. And, and as a whole, it can be an amazing tool for people. I mean, especially through lockdowns and things. We've been able to connect with people across yeah, the world. It's helped. Each other I mean, yeah. I'd never heard of Zoom before. I wish I'd, I'd got some shares. Anyway, that's another story. But it, it's not caught up with, okay. with, with the way the world is. So, I mean, right. what would you say? I mean, you, you've Bobby, been I, look, a couple look, of times. Look, 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 I genuinely think we have to do something or try and do yeah. something. I, I, I'm very worried about the invasion of privacy that social media leads to. I'm very worried about the impact on young children, uh, that it's damaging their self-confidence and worse. And we have to find a way forward. I do not know what it is, uh, but you are passionate for this campaign. Yeah. And I think, Bobby, you're on the right track, and I commend you for your success in TOWIE and for campaigning for our kids to live in a freer, happier space online. Bobby Norris, thank you for joining me. Thank you.